Today, we have my very first exposure to the Volkswagen ID4. This is Volkswagen's foray into the electric vehicle space. Huge brand, huge automaker, tons of history, and now they're here to play with the futuristic electric cars. I love to see these traditional brands getting involved and embracing the electric future. So what exactly is the ID for? Well, uh, as I understand it, you've been driving around the ID4 VW EV. This is your first experience with an EV, so I wanted to sit you down and get some of your feedback on uh, how it's different from a gas car. This is a major change. I think mainly instant feel was that it was quiet and it was very smooth. I kind of want to kick it off with the keys since I'm holding them. This is a high quality key, all right? This thing feels kind of like a smartphone. As soon as I picked it up, I was like, hmm, that's pretty solid. It's got a, a heft to it. It's got kind of a traditional car feel with some futuristic touches. Is that a bad thing? I don't necessarily think so because as this transition is taking place to electric cars, you have to believe that certain customers are going to be looking for more traditional shapes and that certain customers are gonna want things that their current traditional car has. So you look at this from the side and you might think for a second, hey, that doesn't look all that exciting or different, but I think this is all quite intentional from Volkswagen and what they're aiming at here is converting people that have a vehicle that already kind of looks like this and are maybe hesitant to have the full futuristic look of some of the other EVs on the market. So we're getting a greater selection here. This version that we have, Pro S, actually has a full light up front badge and section of the grill here. The headlights are pretty cool to look at as well. You can see the, this, these little diamond patterns in there. It sort of looks like an eyeball. Again, it's slight futuristic touches without having a whole overwhelming futuristic appeal. Of course, since it's an electric car, you can't have a typical handle. You never see a typical handle. It looks like it's gonna be typical, but then when you reach for it, it's just a button on the other side. This works, so I'm fine with it. So here's another cool piece of white badging. I like the white on black look. They're gonna be using this branding, likely the ID portion for uh, their variety of options that they're gonna do in electric. The reason this is significant, you're talking about a major automotive brand. Brand. At times, I think they've been the biggest, they may very well be the biggest right now at this moment. And when they start marketing and pushing their electric vehicles through their uh, enormous dealer network, all of a sudden there's gonna be a lot of people with their leases running out and uh, their trade-ins and so forth that are considering electric that weren't even in the market and for whatever reason were ignoring or avoiding Tesla. Maybe they don't like Elon Musk or something. Pretty sure there's like 50 million people on Twitter that love him very much. So I'm, he probably doesn't mind, to be honest. Anyways, ooh, all right. So we can hit that button. We can hit the key as well. That is a nice size cargo area. I can also see that the car was recently washed, which I appreciate because there's uh, drops coming down. Is that because Willie Do has been commuting a little bit in this vehicle? Maybe he needs an interview. Maybe he needs an interview in this video. We can ask him for some of his experience because I know he's been driving it, living the EV lifestyle ever so slightly. We may have to grab him. Now this model you have here is the all wheel drive and it's around 300 horsepower. Mm -hmm. So did you have a little pep in your step? <laughs> I noticed when I was uh, turning, I would like to give her 
It felt really fast. It felt like a really cushioned, smooth ride, but also a lot of torque. Incredible. First of all though, let's just do this. I don't know what you're gonna hide down there, but you have a little more space. And then one more time, you reveal even more space. By the way, this is my first time seeing the interior. This light colored interior where, where I felt as though the exterior may have had a more traditional look to it. At least this trim that I have in front of me, the interior does bring the future to you. So this is a bit more covert. You know when you're sitting in it and driving it that you are a futuristic human. But then on the outside, it's sort of stealth mode. You roll up to, I don't know, the kid's soccer game and you're like, yeah, it's, it's electric. Don't worry about it. Just gonna go park over here. We don't even need to have a conversation about it. We don't have to have a big chat. You don't have to compliment me on my Tesla. Like you can blend in. So I, some people gotta wanna blend in, I'm guessing. I don't know. All right, let's drop the seats down. Actually, before we do that, what do we have in the center here? Ah, yes. So some cup holders, sturdy, fairly sturdy. And then what does this handle do? Oh, nice. Then we can bring this seat down and then we can reach over and bring this one down. So it's a 60-40 split. We're in cargo heaven. We removed this piece right here and uh, I don't care what you need to carry and I don't care where you need to go. You're probably gonna deal with it just fine in this vehicle. So one heck of a trunk. What do you, I mean, I think it's time that we jump in. Let's do that. So since we're making a video on a car, it made sense to reach into our toolkit and pull out the old Insta360 to get some in-car footage. And then I was like, why don't we just reach out to the company completely and see if they want to sponsor this episode because we only get so many cars coming through the studio and they were down for it. So hence this incredible footage here. So if you're not familiar with the Insta360, Go to this is a tiny little camera that we featured recently on the channel. This thing pops out. Look at this magnetic. You can clip this to a hat for POV. It has this horizon lock. Hey, watch. Bang. 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 That is wild stuff right there. Plus, it fits into this wonderful little case, which also has a tripod built in and a tripod thread. There's even a magnetic kind of necklace lanyard thing that lets you magnetically clip it on the outside of your wow. shirt. Check out how seamless that is. So as you can see from this footage, we got Willie Doo driving around getting the wonderful visuals and you can see the stabilization built in there, the wide field of view. So uh, that makes this perfect for automotive footage. Really, this is gonna be useful for all types of action camera style footage, um, outdoors stuff, sunsets and so forth. The other thing is it pairs up with your smartphone beautifully. Easy transfers onto your social media, straight through your smartphone, all within their app. There's even editing tools in there if you wanna to string together some nice little fine piece of art. So if you're interested in the Insta360 GoTo camera, make sure to check the links in the description. You can click through to learn more, or you can also go check out the original video so you can see even more samples and all of the features. Plus, there's going to be a giveaway on social media all the details for all that stuff will be in the description of this video so go check it out all right Ooh, the seat is is that a memory foam almost this is the pro s trim s stands for statement this is also the all-wheel drive version of the vehicle you're getting more power as well so around 300 horsepower as opposed to 200 horsepower i should just turn it on why don't i just turn it on Let's do that. Now the gear selector is very unusual. You see it up here. To put it into drive, you turn it this way. Ooh, look at the light bar lit up across the front. It also has an unusual setting here for one pedal driving. That's the regenerative braking. So I think if I, I go one more time, it will go to B mode. The drive mode feels more like a regular car and it's the default. By that, I mean you can coast. You're gonna go into reverse. I actually don't mind this selector. It's pretty intuitive. It's not Tesla plaid 
style like getting rid of the gear selector almost completely other than the screen but it is minimal and functional the display in front of me showcases my range as well as my speed uh, this looks like some of the assistance systems for distance from the car in front of you we also get a sense for the cameras here uh, we have a couple different options we can see the way that the tires are currently facing the direction that they're in. This is not like a crazy huge display, but it's sufficient. Climate is down here as well as volume, and I'm gonna put it back in park. Park is a button on the, on the outside here. So I just connected my phone and I see that there's wireless Android Auto, which is good. So obviously wireless Android Auto is the way to go. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just play some audio from this podcast here. And then the volume is in the center. You can tap in some fashion that you're, to increase that the degree of volume. I think you can or swipe. Some change yeah, you can in swipe the environment well. that's woo. That's loud. That I noticed another thing. If you better, mute it, it then pauses it. If it's muted, it pauses the thing and knows you can't hear. Act. Oh, in your ears, it's I'm probably nutty. Feeling it. Yeah. So I'm feeling the bass throughout the whole car. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I've uh, watched a couple of videos and heard that we're lacking a little responsiveness here. I'm hoping this is something that they can address. Uh, maybe it's software based. Hopefully, it's not to do with the limitations as far as the hardware is concerned. Now there are some dedicated buttons for parking, climate, your assistance features and your drive mode. You have heated seats, which you can control from here. There's a heated steering wheel on this model also. That's interesting. This is called classic climate. And then over here is smart climate. Oh, I don't mind that. Warm feet, warm hands, cool feet. Like you can, that's not bad. That's not bad. Sometimes you just want to quickly yeah, my hands are cold. Bang. This is pretty cool. This lets you enable or disable certain assistance features. Like for example, lane keep. If I click on this car here, lane change system, side assist, it's active. I can turn that feature off from here. So I can just configure it right from there. Can I click here as well? Oh yeah, there you go. Front assist. That's your emergency braking. You can have your advance warning from early, medium, late, depending on what you want. And this is for your drive mode. Look at, check out that graphic. Eco, you get leaves and windmills. Comfort, gonna obviously be the most comfortable. Sport is gonna make it a little bit more responsive. And then you have your custom settings as well if you wanna configure your own drive mode. Ooh, lighting, let's do lighting. Like any good electric car, we have a variety of lighting modes for the ambient mood lighting. I set the mood, don't you? Now, I know the bar has been set quite high because when we had that EQS in here, it was like a whole, it was like a nightclub in there. Wow. What a spot to be in. What a place to find yourself. But we have some settings in here as well and uh, let's cycle through it. Mo, why don't you go ahead and kill the lights? Infinity, eternity, desire. Wow mega custom options basically what you are controlling is this light strip in the front uh, around the doors and inside of this little compartment over here but you can turn the lights back on all right yeah a little bit more about this uh, wireless charging section when we had the ambient light on i noticed where it was i love this location it's got this sort of downward angle so your phone doesn't slide or move around also, it's sort of protected, like it's kind of in there, but still very accessible. I know it's a small thing. I know I'm getting carried away, but I really, I like a good spot to put your phone that's natural as you enter your car and remove it from your pocket. You got this huge access down here to this compartment, two USB type C ports, removable dividers, which will allow you to put an enormous cup or water bottle, which sometimes I have one of those enormous ones and you could fit it in here. I guess you could also just change the direction of these. Look at that. And then also you can close the whole thing up if you have, I don't know, stuff you wanna cover up in there if it becomes messy. Plus with wireless Android Auto, I just never even need to think about it. Like if I go back to the homepage, go back to Android Auto, look at that, lovely. Wirelessly plus wireless charging 
goodbye cables, no cables in the car necessary. But this is also removable. You can just do that. And then you have a giant bin there if for whatever reason you prefer, but also my thought process in order to clean it out because those can get gross sometimes. Up here, we have some reading lights and we have a shade that comes across the panoramic roof. What do I do? Oh, I just pull so it's touch sensitive. And here comes the shade. By the way, this is a large panoramic roof. This is another common thing that we're seeing in vehicles. Ne never mind just electric vehicles, but big piece of glass on the top. There we go. It's all closed up. Now the sun is out the way and then we just slide back and there it goes. All right. So now I'm in the back seat of the ID4 with this glass roof. It does. It feels like a lot of space. Actually, you appreciate the glass roof more from the rear than you do from the front. I guess that would be typical because, but I also feel like I'm a little bit higher. It almost feels like a better seat than the front seat. This is a really nice rear seat. Oh, by the way, I'm six feet tall and still look at me in the rear and it's not a huge car. So I'm pretty happy about this, the feeling of space here. So here we have an iPad in the bottom pouch, but then you got this little phone pouch. I don't know if it's four phones, but it's kind of perfect for a phone. And you also have chargers down here for those devices, which now have a spot to live in. All right, so the only thing left to check out here is the frunk or lack thereof. We had the frunk conversation. I told you they decided against it. It appears they needed the space either way because we do have a variety of mechanical components underneath the hood. Kind of, it actually looks fairly typical to a regular car. It, I mean, there's still no fuel, but you have fluids. Windshield washer fluid is still an important fluid and it's underneath this hood. Do I wish there was a frunk? I mean, frunks are fun, so sure. But uh, like I said, in my experience with frunk capable cars, I don't really use it that much. I need a real, I need to see this F-150 frunk. That might change frunks forever. I think the message with this vehicle is like a practicality. It's not over the top. It's not trying to, it's not, crazy over the top it's understated it's covert it's an ev that isn't screaming at you that it's an ev it just has these touches uh and the ability how do you charge it how do you charge it how did we miss the charge port so charging this vehicle up is back here at this door this is your typical charger we were we're charging it with uh, charge point so uh, yeah you can charge it pretty much anywhere fairly simple to use it's in the traditional gas tank location. I think I prefer the chargers at the front, but it's not a huge deal. So what is the story of the ID4? It's a pretty understated electric vehicle. I think it has a place in the market. I think people need options. If the whole marketplace is gonna transition to electric, then some people are gonna want a more uh approachable styling not everything has to look like a spaceship if you're looking for it and you want to feel futuristic it's still in there a little bit but it's not slapping you in the face it's not sending you to mars and i think that that deserves a spot in the market especially from an automaker that already has a rich history and it seems is more interested in converting people from gas cars than necessarily stealing customers from Tesla. So this is the high trim level. This is the all wheel drive. This is the model that a lot of people in this climate are probably going to want. But the entry level, the affordable model, the two wheel drive model is going to get a lot of attention as well, because after rebates and things, depending on where you live, it may be somewhere in the $35,000 range. And that's pretty cool to see electric vehicles coming down in price and now coming from a variety of manufacturers, including the world famous VW. That's the ID4. Trim level is pretty nice, a fairly luxurious interior. I noticed there were massage seats. I noticed there was wireless Android Auto. Did you experience any of these features? I did, yeah. I just connected my phone and it was super quick. Um, Android Auto just connected. Driving this car, the drive selector is just super futuristic, very modern. Mm -hmm. And nothing like my old sedan. Being on, in the driver's seat is very, it feels like a cockpit. Mm -hmm. It feels like mission control, you know. How'd you find the cargo space? So I actually used the cargo space. 
I fit some uh, chairs and a table in there. Just really? To, move it to my new house. So, yeah, I mean, it's roomy. Were they like folded up or were they? They were folded. They were folded up. Yeah. yeah. And you put it in the in the in the hatch back mm -hmm. there. Yep. That stuff may or may not have fit in your other car. No, definitely not. <laughs> oh, we should also ask Otis. Did Otis go for a ride in the electric car? He did. Yeah. Otis. Tell me, what did you think of the ID4? <laughs> okay, now, uh, this is the last piece, Will. I have one simple question for you after this, I don't know, three-day experience with your very first EV. The question is, EV or no EV? Hmm. Well, yes. Willie do.